Today I'm going to go as in-depth as I can into how to use the velocity effect in HitFill. The velocity effect is named after the velocity effect in Sony Vegas Pro. It's also known as time remapping in After Effects and in HitFilm it's known as the speed effect. What all of these effects allow you to do is it allows you to keyframe the speed of your shot. The speed effect is very popular when creating gaming montages and syncing the gunshots from an FPS gameplay to the beats in music. That's the example we're going to be looking at today but I hope that you'll be able to use the techniques that I'll show you in today's video and apply it to all kinds of things. First of all, I'm in a composite shot right here because in order to keyframe this effect, you're going to have to be in one. If you're not already in one, just go to the editor where your clip is, right click on it and press make composite shot. Then just hit OK and you should find yourself in a composite shot. I also brought my music into the composite shot so that I could work with it better. The only downside though is that when you have music here, you won't actually be able to see the waveform. The first thing to do is grab the speed effect. So go to the effects panel, just search up for it, and just drag it onto your video layer. In fact, before I show you how this works, I'm just going to show you what kind of setup I've got here. I've got the song playing in the background. And then we've just got the gameplay footage on top here. As you can see, it's kind of very out of sync with the music. And so we want to time the gunshots to be playing at each beat in the music. The first step is to just start keyframing the speed effect. Go to the very beginning where your clip starts. I'm going to open up the speed effect and just hit this little circle next to the speed. This will enable keyframing and create a keyframe in this position. If you don't already know, keyframe is a way of animation where you set a point in time for the value to be a certain value. And then you can set another one and it'll change between those two points in time. So for now, this first keyframe makes sure that at this point in time, the speed remains at 1. 1 means that the speed of the video plays back at a constant 100% rate, just normal rate. If it's at 2, it plays back at twice the rate. If it's half, then it plays back at half the rate. The next thing we're going to do now is to find the next bit in the music where we want the gunshot to be. I'm just going to hide the video layer to make sure we don't get any lag at all, and just go back to the beginning of the video. In programs such as Vegas, you'd use markers to mark these beats in the music, but in HitFilm, you can't really do that yet. So just pause the video where you find the beat. So that's the beat where I want the next gunshot to be. Just to save the position down, I'm just going to drag on the slider to create a new keyframe. I'm just going to set it back to 1 for now. If we show the layer again, you'll notice though that the gunshot is very out of sync still. The gunshot is actually all the way over here, whereas we need it to be all the way back here. So to do this, we're going to have to, of course, speed up the video. So to speed these clips up, I'm just going to change both of these keyframes to be a number like 3. I'm just going to use the comma and the period or full stop keys to scroll forward one frame at a time, back and forth. You'll know you're at the first keyframe when a little circle appears within this circle. When you're at the first keyframe, set it to 3 and do the same for the next one. If you scroll through our footage frame by frame, you'll notice that the shot took place around here, which is just a little bit before the keyframe. But that's fine, because we're going to add another keyframe into the mix here. At the moment, both of these keyframes are just really just setting up a constant speed. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go halfway in between these keyframes, where the backbeat would be, and set a new keyframe for 0.5, or half. Now the speed goes from 3 to half to 3, in a pretty short amount of time. If you want to visualize this, then go to the value graph. Just click value graph here, and you can see the speed effect visualized in a graph. On the x-axis is time, like normal, and on the y-axis here is the value of the effect. At the 3 second mark, it's 3, and here it's 3 as well, but it dips down to half in the middle here. Because it dips down to half in the middle here, you'll notice that now it plays back slower, and the actual shot is somewhere all the way over here. So I'm quickly just going to increase the speed of both of these keyframes. 
to something like 4 or so. It's still not fast enough, so I'll increase it again to something like 5. And now we can see that when the second one's increased to 5, the shot plays back at pretty much perfectly the right time on the beat. I should also mention that the way that I've done the slow-mo here in the middle is very optional. There are lots of different ways to have the velocity effect. Of course, as you can tell now, I'm going to have it very fast at each gunshot and slow-mo in the middle. But you can also have it fast in the middle and then slow at each gunshot to have a slow-mo when you're shooting. It's up to you, but for now I think this works pretty well. Because I'm going to be messing with the interpolation, as you'll see later, I'm also going to set the first keyframe here to be 5. Now the gunshot plays even before the keyframe, but that's okay. You'll notice that now the keyframes are set in constant interpolation mode, which means that between each keyframe it just goes straight from one to the next to the other. And that gets pretty boring and doesn't really look very smooth. So to change this, select all the keyframes just by creating a rectangular lasso, and just head over to this button, convert selected keyframes to manual bezier, and just hit it. And now we'll get this really smooth curve. Not only is this curve a lot smoother, but it's actually adjustable, which is the main benefit of using such interpolation mode. So if I just focus on this keyframe, you'll notice how I can actually click on this arm here and just drag it down like so. And I'm changing the interpolation of the clip. So now it suddenly goes down, slowly comes back up again. You can adjust this arm to time the clip in whichever way you want. You see, when I move it here, it's at this frame, but if I move it down a bit to make it a little bit slower, then it plays one frame back here. And if I move it up again, you can see it plays one frame forward here. So using these curves is a really good way to just fine tune your speed adjustment. I'm now going to create a RAM preview to play these back without lag. To do that, I'm just gonna get out of the value graph real quick go to before the clip starts and hit this button right here, which is for RAM preview. When previewing, it'll preview each frame and it'll render each frame and store it in the RAM. That way we get a completely lag-free version of the video that we can play back really easily. The more RAM you have on your computer, the bigger the file you're going to be able to store here. So the longer a playback you'll get. The RAM preview is now done. Let's play back and see what it looks like. So you can see it got pretty hectic there towards the end. I'll just create some new keyframes to make it a little bit less hectic. I'm just going to grab these two last keyframes, go into the value graph will make it a little bit easier for me. Just press Command-C, I will on my Mac, and you can press Control-C if you've got a PC. Then I'm going to hide and find the backbeat. At this point, I'm just going to paste these keyframes back again. And again, this is completely personal preference, but like I did with the first keyframe over here, I'm going to grab this and just move it all the way down so that we really speed up to the gunshot and then after the gunshot we go pretty, pretty quickly, pretty steeply into slow motion territory here before speeding back up again to the next gunshot. This is just the way that I like to do my velocity when I'm editing gaming montages because it really emphasizes each gunshot and kind of spins into it. But again, all of this stuff is completely up to your experimentation. But even now, it's not perfect because now we have to retime the second gunshot. I'm just going to go forward a little by, bit by bit, and you'll see here that we have the second gunshot approaching, and there we go. That's the second gunshot, and it's a little bit before this keyframe. I don't want that to happen because it's a little bit too early for me, and I want to catch it just a couple of frames later. So what I'm going to do is go forward to the keyframe over here. I'm just going to lower the speed to say four. Even at four, we're a little bit after the gunshot here. So I'm just going to go down to three, see what happens. Here we're a little bit before the gunshot. So I'm just going to move to say three and a half. You'll go through this process too. It's just continually changing and retiming everything until it works. So you can go ahead and do this process for all the gunshots in your scene. It's a very time consuming process and it takes a lot of fiddling, but once you do it, you should come up with a pretty good result. I'll fast forward to when I'm done.
Wow, so that took a while. I'm not sure exactly how long that took, it'll probably say up on screen right now, but it did take a while. And uh, yeah, so it does take a while, but hopefully you will get good results at the end. If you are stuck and you just can't get the timing right, just make sure that you just keep trying different things, and when you try different things, you'll get a better understanding of how the effect really works, and then hopefully you'll be able to do your own things with it. I really do hope that you found this tutorial useful. If you did, and you really did find something helpful from it, then please leave a like, uh, subscribe to this channel, and leave a comment, and of course, share this with people that you also think would find this helpful. I'll see you in the next video.